Hello, welcome. This is Vishal Malkan and we have Mr. Jack Canfield for a quick interview on what sets up the people who are rich versus poor in terms of habits, in terms of their beliefs, in terms of their manifestations. So let's talk to Jack about that. Thank you, Jack, for joining us on this channel. And I am truly honored to interview. We interview you on this uh, platform for the first time. Of course, last time, Meghna, my wife, got the privilege of interviewing you. So let's start with the first thing. You have seen a lot in your life. You have written so many books. You have done so many seminars and workshops. And you spoke on abundance, energy, uh, the money manifestation. So what one particular habit which sets the rich apart from the poor? What would be that? Well, there are a number, but I think one that we were focusing on in this conference is the um, your beliefs. You know, what happens, what happens, people that are successful and wealthy believe it's possible. They believe they deserve it. They believe that if they don't know how to do it, they'll find out how to do it. They believe that they can, um, you know, put a team together. They believe that they're worthy of having that support. And then I think the second thing is they keep reinforcing that belief through affirmations, through visualization, and then they take action. And this is interesting. Most people don't realize that action is a part of belief. In other words, if you believe the diet would work, you would then act on that. If you didn't believe it would work, you would never take action on it. So the fact that you take action to move toward your goals to achieve them means that you believe it's possible. So we always teach act as if, act as if you're already a millionaire, act as if you're already abundant. How would you be? How would you talk? How would you dress? Would you be more generous? Would you feel more confident? So I would say that's the main thing I notice is attitude and belief. Oh, great. Uh, so I know the, there is uh, this belief part, which also we cover in our program called ABCT, Anybody Can Train. Uh, there are so many beliefs, uh, especially about the stock market or the financial markets being risky, dangerous, or maybe gambling or not so stable. And But what we have learned is that if you do it the right way as a business, as a pro process driven thing, it can really become a good source of income. But how do you change those beliefs? Because they are so strong. And because we hear a lot of stories around that, okay, this guy lost the money, this guy has lost his house and all that. So how do you how do you avoid and how do you create a bubble around those kind of negative people around us? Well, most people lost their house or their shirt or whatever. There are people that did not know what they were doing. There are people that took a big risk. I mean, I know people recently and invested a lot of money in cryptocurrency without having any idea what they were really doing. Everyone said, oh, you should buy you know, Bitcoin right at the top when it was, you know, it's $60,000. Now it's down to like 38 or something. So it's like often there's not an understanding of the of the game. If you were to go to Africa, you would want to go with a guide. You want a guide that's been down the river, that knows where the lions live, that know where the hippopotamuses are and the alligators and so forth. Someone that's done it, someone that's been successful, someone that's studied it. Everything has a system to it, including the stock market, including investments. There are there are there's knowledge and if you gain that knowledge then you can be successful so i would basically tell people that are afraid you know yes there are people who've lost their shirt but there are also people who are very very wealthy and those people have succeeded and they have left you know success leaves clues it's a great quote from tony robbins success leaves clues in the form of courses like you teach uh, coaching mentors books etc and there are many many people who've made a, a, a lot of money because they were investing properly, they knew how to do it. They had a not just knowledge, but a system, et cetera. And when you have that, you can be successful at anything, including the stock market, including investment, including trading, currency trading, all kinds of things are doable if you know what you're doing. So you want to attach your wagon to a master like yourself, who's been successful, who knows what they're doing, is a good teacher and can show you the way. Oh, great. Uh, that's such a lovely uh, example. And uh, talking about guides, and mentors, uh, we are living in a world what we what we uh, like to teach our uh, students is we are living in a world where we have to have self education versus the formal education. So, what are your thoughts on on having a mentor or a guide uh, to scale up or to go faster on the route? And how do you find a good mentor? Well, when you think about formal education, most people graduate from college and university. They've never had a course on financial literacy. And so it's just, they're not, we're not approaching the things people really need to know in our traditional education systems. So 
I think for me, if I was looking for a mentor, number one, I would look for someone who'd already accomplished what I want to accomplish. You know, I remember getting makeup put on at a, at a TV studio and I asked the woman putting it on. I said, do you have a dream? She said, yes. I said, what's your dream? She said, I want to own my own salon. I said, what are you doing to make that happen? She said, nothing. I said, that's a terrible strategy. It will never get you there. <laughs> and so uh, she said, well, I don't know what to do. I said, go find someone who owns a salon who's successful and ask them how they did it. And maybe even work there, learn a little bit from them, you know, have some of them mentor you, whatever. She went, oh, that's an amazing idea, you know. But the fact is, always look for someone who's accomplished what you want to accomplish. You know, I coach a lot of authors because I've been a successful author. You're coaching people in the field that you are because you've been successful in that field. And you want someone who's constantly learning and studying and growing as, as you are and other people are. So that because th things change over time, new things happen. And I think then I would ask other people, I would say, well, who, who have you worked with? Can I talk to them? You know, so you're getting testimony and, and, and feedback from people who have studied with that person. Look at their track record. You know, um, that's what I would say, basically. Is, is, and then, then approach the mentor, do whatever you can to get into their sphere of influence, whether it's take a class, ask them to mentor you, be a private coach, whatever it takes. I'll, I'll share a quick story. There was a guy I wanted to mentor me, and he wasn't taking students. And I said, the next time you're in LA, instead of hiring a limo driver, call me. I will drive you anywhere you want to go for as many days as you want if I can just ask you questions. And he did. And I asked him questions nonstop for like two days as we were driving around. He was very gracious. He answered them. Later, we both, we were in the same business. We both bid on a, a contract that was worth about a million dollars. And I won it because I'd learned from him so well. Wow. That, and he wrote, he wrote me a letter and said, damn, you're a good student. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great story. That's yeah. a great example, actually. Yes, uh, the real student is who I, I think uh, who goes beyond the mentor, like uh, over a period of time. And that's, that's, the, that's the kind of fascination. Okay, so one challenge which we face in stock trading or investing is, man, I also faced in my life, many of our students face, is that we are able to make money but then sometimes we are not able to retain the money. We lose it back. So what could be the mindset point of view for, for that particular kind of a pattern? Well, I think, first of all, you have to have the belief that you're going to retain your money. I'm someone who makes money and keeps money. That would be my, you know, and invest it and then it grows. I'm a successful investor, a trader, et cetera. Uh, have that mindset. And then I would be someone who pays attention to the market, pays attention to what things are doing. I think you have to go in daily and see what's going on, use what you know to do that. And I would say also, a lot of people make money and they spend it as fast as they make it instead of investing it. You know, I, I'm a big believer in tithing to spiritual teachers and tithing to myself. So 10% of everything I make, sometimes more, 50% if it's a big check, goes into long-term investments. Now, I do buy things for myself. I'm, I'm going to enjoy myself before I die. But the reality is everybody needs to have an investment plan, an amount of money. John D. Martini, who was one of my friends, is very, very wealthy. He said, I put 10% of everything I earned. And that's why I read something by a guy who's named John Templeton. And John Templeton was a really billionaire. And he said he took 50 cents of every dollar he made. So John started doing that. And he said, even if I just made $5, I put $2.50 into that investment account. If I made $10, $5, I made $1,000, $500. And he just kept investing, 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 investing. And now he's like a multimillionaire. Yeah, so that's that's uh, reinvesting and not spending away or not losing away is the, is the key to it. And also having the right belief that you can retain it, right? Yes. Okay, great. Yeah. So uh, what one, one thing which fascinates me about uh, you is that I saw the your page on Wikipedia and you like you're 77, right? What makes you go uh, so strong and so so full of passion at this age? What is the secret behind that? Well, I've always loved what I do, Vishal, and I, and I can't imagine not doing it. It's like a lot of people retire from a job they don't like so they can play golf or go around the world. Or whatever. And I traveled around the world. I've been to 51 countries teaching what I teach. And, you know, in India, I think five times and so forth. But the reality is, I love teaching. I love people's eyes lighting up. I love getting emails saying, you know, I, I left an abusive marriage. I started a business. I'm being successful. I became a billionaire. My book made the bestseller list. Um, that's what I do, you know? And so why would I stop doing that? Oh, wow. That's, that's such an inspiration for us. Like uh, we also think that we are running around a lot at this age, but uh, I think there's a long way to go for us also. 
and of course we love what we do and that keeps us going so uh, okay last couple of questions is like a uh, couple of books which you think can make a big impact in terms of your money blueprint or your money beliefs or something like psychology of money or anything like that which couple of books would well, you I, I think think and grow rich by napoleon hill it's a classic i would definitely have everyone read that I would basically have them read my book, The Success Principles. I think that's a good book to read. Uh, the Science of Getting Rich by Wallace Waddles is another classic. Um, and then I, there are so many books now out there. Uh, you know, uh, Bob Proctor wrote a book called Born Rich, you know. And so the idea is we, we are all born into a world of abundance. And there are tons of people. All the, the, the Secrets, another great book. Any book on the law of attraction, um, you know, and then there's books within the field of, of finance and money and investment. I would always read those as well. So I like to split my reading between what will inspire me and remind me of universal principles, and then what will teach me unique skills within the field that I'm in, in your case, you know, investments and, and money and so forth. Okay, great. So one, one last thing for uh, all the audience of our channel who want to make it big, and make money in stock market and investing and trading and all, what one uh, piece of advice you would give them, like last last advice for them? Start now, don't wait. Make sure they work with you. And, uh, <laughs> you know, get a good mentor and you are one and your wife and so forth. And so I would say, you know, work with people, get, in other words, do it now, don't wait, start today. You know, the, the people, there's a great quote I love says, there's two best times to plant a tree 20 years ago. And if you didn't do that today. <laughs> All right. Oh, great. Thank you so much, Jack, for joining us on this channel. We had a complete pleasure doing this. And I'm sure my audience is love, going to love your session in the program called ABCT and also this part of Q&A also. Thank you so much. You're very welcome, Vishal. Thank you so Keep much. Keep up the good work. Thanks.